I did hit one. For whatever reason, I hit Sandy fairly well. I don't know why. But um, I did hit a home run against him in Dodger Stadium. And since then, every time I see him, I don't know if he's traveled with the club now or not, but every time I see him, I always apologize because I thought it was going to keep him out of the Hall of Fame. <laughs> and he, he doesn't like it when I apologize to him. He said, quit doing that. You always apologize and don't do that anymore. But he's, he's been a long-time good friend, too. Great guy. And but, oh, sorry. That, was, yeah, that was my home run experience against Sandy. It's yeah. To your right, Kevin. Bob, I was here with the Mets in the summer, and you came over to visit in their clubhouse, and, and the interaction with the players was tremendous. They really seemed to enjoy talking to you. How, how, do, you, how do you still relate to players at this age, and, and uh, you know what, what's behind all that? Well, I, I think for the most part, um, they know that I played, and I think that's where the relation really comes in. Um, I've, I've been on the same side where you've got a 10-game losing streak. Um, you've got to talk to the press. It's not sometimes the most pleasant thing, but you have to do it. And I know what that's like. And, um, again, what, what I've done um, with my career, so to speak, to, uh, to do the shows and stuff that I did, and they can watch it now and see what I did as far as um, – making fun of, of things that I did. But I, I do that because it makes people laugh, and I like to make people laugh. And I, I've gone through that with my, with my kids. Uh, why do you do that? Why do you talk the way you do? But to me, it's funny. I don't, it doesn't, doesn't bother me. Um, as a matter of fact, the other day, when we were in Colorado, and... Uh, Seng Wan Oh came into the game with his interpreter. And after they finished talking on the mound, I said that if I was the hitter here, I would probably face the interpreter. Uh, <laughs> Seng Wan Oh would go to the dugout. Uh, but that kind of stuff, you know, and I don't know why I think of stuff like that either. That's another thing. I, um, it, it, all those little things just come to mind. I don't know why. Again, uh, it's... But to be around these guys that we have here, um, and we've had some really good teams here and great players that have come through here, but uh, per man on this club, nobody says I here. And I think that, that impresses a lot of people, impresses a lot of writers, impresses me all the time, that they're, that they're always we. Um, and there's a lot of I stuff that happened here this year. But no matter what, what happens, they're, they're always we. And they treat me like I'm one of them um, for a long time, probably 25 years, even more than that. I threw batting practice every day on the road, here. Um, I was with them all the time. I was with them more than I was with the broadcast people. I was with the players before, during, and after games. Um, it, it, and the, you, you know, you become friends. You, you, you become friends with their family. Uh, Robin Young, Robin Young, for instance. Robin's kids, I've watched them grow up, Jim Gantner's kids. Those guys that are here or were here for a long time. I watch their kids grow up. I watch their grandkids. And I see them. And I visit with them. Um, there, there's no age factor with them for me. Um, throwing out the first pitch tonight. Um, I was going to take a Percocet and throw it in the upper deck. You know, that, that would have been good. That would have been good for a laugh. Um, but just stuff like that. I mean, what's wrong with that? You know, it, But the statue that they put in the upper deck here, um, it was from a great Miller Lite commercial that happened to be at Dodger Stadium where we filmed it where I was supposedly in the front row and ended up in the upper deck at Dodger Stadium. Well, when they did the second statue here, um, I thought it was funny. Plus, it raises money for charity. Um, you can go up and sit next to it for a dollar, I guess it is, and the money goes to charity. 
the, the only thing I asked was that nobody sit facing me. Um, <laughs> and just come up there and sit and, you know, take your picture and leave. But all that, all that stuff, it, it's good for the club. It's good for fans. It's, it's something that fans like. I'm, I never changed. I mean, my, my MO has never changed from the time I started here, and I don't care what I did. Um, any, anything other than baseball was, you know, a ha, ha, ha. This was always number one for me. I never wanted to leave here and had the opportunity to do uh, the network stuff and work with some of the great guys in the game, Al Michaels and Bob Costas. Um, but I always wanted to come back here. I, I, I love doing radio. I always have. And uh, that, that, that would never change for me. Never. And when Bud Seelig brought me back here in 1971, uh, and there were a, a couple of things that could have changed um, my time here in, in opportunities that I had outside of baseball to do. The, the television, Mr. Belvedere, uh, the Miller Light commercials. Pabst was our big sponsor at that time. And for me to do a Miller Lite spot was totally out of whack. And after the fourth time that they asked me to do it, I, I went and talked to Bud and I told him that if the Brewers didn't let me do that or want me to do it, then I would go someplace else. And the same thing with Mr. Belvedere because I had to leave here two weeks before the end of the season to go out and get a couple of shows. But I would do that. I would fly there and do the show and then fly back to wherever the Brewers were. Um, there were tonight shows where I took the players with me. Um, we were playing over in Anaheim. I would get on a helicopter and go over to tonight's show, do the show, and then fly back to, to uh, Anaheim to continue the game. But I, I did that all the time. I would fly overnight to L.A., do the show, and then get a red eye and come back. I, and, and it was no big deal. Um, it was something that I wanted to do, and, and Bud uh, graciously, you know, he let me do it. Otherwise, I'd have left. So he didn't have much of a choice. Uh, <laughs> but I, I, I'm glad I, I never came to that point that I had to make a decision to leave, uh, leave here. But everything, he was always for it. Buddy was. And the third row on your right. Uh, Bob, a couple years ago, uh, there was an online fan movement to get you to call the World Series when the Indians were in it. Um, <laughs> now that the Brewers are this close, do you anticipate anything like that, or do you look forward to potentially having the opportunity to have the Brewers and be able to call it there? Uh, I, I, you know, from the movie Major League, right, the, the three that I did, the third one stunk. Uh, it was really bad. I could have played in that one. Uh, but, no, um, when they called to ask me about coming and doing the Cleveland and Cubs series, World Series, and they kept referring to Major League, right? The World Series is for real. I don't want to do nothing to the World Series that's going to make fun of the World Series. And I talked with Joe Buck, who's a longtime friend, and... He said, why don't you just come and sit in for a while? Well, I thought that, depending on who won, the Indians fans would be mad if I did it and the Cubs won, and vice versa with the Cub fans. Uh, I went there a couple years ago, and they had uh, Harry Doyle night at the ballpark, and I had to throw out the first pitch. And, you know, it was a big night in Cleveland. It was, it was, it was, it was fun. And I had to tell the catcher, you know, I'm, I'm telling you where i got to throw it. You know, i got to throw it outside just to get outside, right? <laughs> which I did, but I didn't, want to make, I didn't want to do anything that would make fun of the World Series. And I thought Major League, despite the fact that it was you know, a lot of fun to do and everything, it was not, it was not the right place for me to, to be and to do any kind of play-by-play. -play. And when I, when I talked to Joe about it, I said, look, this is none of my doing because there was a lot of people that wanted me to, to go there and do some of the play-by-play. And I told Joe, this has nothing to do with anything about me or, or anything else. I am not 
going to do that. I would never do something like that. The movie was a movie, and the World Series is a World Series. Yeah. The second row on your right, Bill Platt. Yeah, yeah, Bob, over here. Do you, would you like your legacy to be as a player, an announcer, an actor, entertainer? What do you, how do you want people to remember you? Uh, well, I've already made a deal with Mark Adonazio once I pass on to bring me back here every five years around the warning track and then make sure they take me back to the same place. Uh, I don't, there is no legacy as far as any of them go, you know. I, I honestly, when I first started doing baseball games, I never did any play-by-play, -play. I never did anything. I had done Tonight Shows, I started that in 1969. I never did any play-by-play. -play. Buddy brought me back here, and I worked with Merle Harmon and Tom Collins, two great guys. My crutch was that I worked one inning, and they always sat with me. So I did play-by-play -play for the fifth inning, but I always had them on either side of me as a crutch. Well, the day they let me go by myself was at Yankee Stadium, and it was my fifth inning, and Merle Harmon introduced me, and they both got up and left. And I was by myself. And I begged them to come back. I don't know if any of you remember old Yankee Stadium, the press box there in the press row. But they were up, up there and looking at me, and I begged them to come back. And they wouldn't come back. And the engineer, this is a true story, finally told me, you better start talking. There's one out. And I, <laughs> I, 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 I had never done anything before like that. The Tonight Shows and, and doing that stuff was easy. Doing play-by-play -play because I... I kept thinking about my friends here in Milwaukee, guys that I grew up with, listening to the game, and here I am doing play-by-play, -play, you know. And, and what, what they were thinking, that's what I was thinking, what they thought of me, not, not the audience, all my friends. How can this guy be doing play-by-play? -play? That, that's, and they wouldn't come back, and they didn't come back. And from then on, I did the fifth inning all by myself. And then after about a month of that, they finally sat with me and talked to me during the fifth inning. But that was a, that was a rude awakening. I'm, I'm really, because I had done, and again, I'm just telling you all the stuff that I had done. Colleges, you know, go on stage in front of 2,000 kids, and, you know, the more they laugh because I didn't talk, the more they laughed, and then you keep looking at them, what the hell are you laughing at? You know, I haven't talked yet. But that, that's the way it was with, with baseball. I could, I could go down the field. I threw, I threw batting practice, as I said before. Every day, I'd get dressed, and I'd go upstairs. I didn't have to do any pregame shows at that time, so that's what I did. But that, that was frightening. To do play-by-play -play alone was really, really tough. The Tonight Show, the first time in New York, it was 19 before they moved. And when I got backstage, I was standing there, and the guy that opens the curtain is still there. And now I'm ready to go on, and I'm thinking, what the hell are you doing here? You know, you, you had everything's fine. What do, you, what do you start this stuff for? And I had never done any kind of TV, that kind of TV. Um, I, I was fortunate in my days in Atlanta to meet Al Hurt, one of the great trumpeters in the world. And I did a show for him one night, and he told me that he was going to get me on a Tonight Show. And I said, oh, yeah, really? And about two weeks later, they called, and I went to New York. And the guy said, what do you do? I, you know, I don't do nothing. You know, I just make up these stories. Make up these stories. And he said, okay, can you come back in two weeks? I said, yeah, I, yeah, sure. That, that's exactly what happened. What do you do? I said, I don't do nothing. Just talk, you know. And the first show I ever did with Johnny, first time, at the end of the show, as he and Ed McMahon always said good night to the guests, shake hands and say good night, and he said good night to me, and Ed said good night, and as I was walking away, I heard Johnny say to Ed, "Did that guy really play baseball?" <laughs> <laughs> That's a true story. And Ed McMahon said, "I think so." <laughs> and I went back two weeks later. They had me back two weeks later, and I mean that—that's the way it always was. I—I I would do four or five shows a year for all those years, and he, and he treated me, he treated me unbelievably great. He was 
Tonight Show people were, were unbelievably nice to me. Well, Mr. But I, and I always had a good time. Mr. Baseball, we wish you the best of luck, and we thank you for your time tonight. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you all for coming. I appreciate that. Thanks thank for coming. Thank you very much. In. We appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Thank you.